Hey everybody, it's Jenny from Norman S. Wright. Last week's video topic was heat pumps and how they work, and I think that's a good lead-in to this week's topic, VRF systems. So let's talk about VRF systems and how they work. Let's get started. VRF stands for Variable Refrigerant Flow. It's also known as VRV, Variable Refrigerant Volume. So instead of varying the airflow volume like VAV systems do, I described these a couple months ago, VRF systems vary the refrigerant flow. Daikin invented VRF in 1982 when it launched its VRV air conditioning system. VRF systems use refrigerant as the cooling and heating medium. VRF systems have been in use in Japan since the 80s, and it's widely used in Europe and Asia in commercial buildings. In the U.S., we didn't really start seeing VRF till the early 2000s, and interest has been steadily growing. So let's look at how they work. Let's bring back the heat pump images from the last video. Now, I didn't do this in the last video, but I want to label some of the refrigerant lines. The line that carries hot vapor refrigerant out of the compressor is the hot gas line. The line that carries low pressure refrigerant into the compressor is the suction line. And the line of cooler liquid refrigerant going into the expansion device is called the liquid line. This heat pump refrigerant flow path is also how VRF units provide heating and cooling. A VRF system also has an inverter to control the speed of the compressor to provide only enough refrigerant to match the needs of the space. In other words, it varies the refrigerant flow. VRF systems do not have ductwork. So in the heat pump system I talked about last week, the air that goes through the heat exchangers is often ducted into the space, and that is how it heats and cools the space. But in VRF systems, since they don't have ductwork, the air is blown through the indoor heat exchanger directly into the space. So you would have one or more outdoor heat exchangers and several indoor modular heat exchangers in each zone. So let's move this away and look at how that will look. Okay, so let's draw this out. Let's draw one outdoor heat exchanger and we'll have three indoor heat exchangers connected to it. Each indoor unit will be connected to a branch controller. So we're just gonna draw these as boxes right now. The branch controller has a set of valves to control the refrigerant flow into each module. And each module is also connected to three lines. Each branch controller will have a few valves to control which direction the flow goes through and an expansion device. So let's label the expansion device in yellow here. And then these are valves. Now let's draw the other two units in the same way. Okay, so next let's draw in the compressor, which has an inverter on it to vary the refrigerant flow. And now we also have an expansion device out here, not connected directly to the indoor units. And let's pipe all this up. So again, we have a valve to control the flow, whether it goes into the expansion device or not. And then we got another couple valves coming out the other side of the outdoor unit. Okay, so let's go back to these branch controllers. Let me extend these lines a little bit so they don't overlap as much when I connect them all. So this top one are all going to be connected and this is going to go back to the compressor as the suction line. And it's also going to connect to this bottom one coming out of the outdoor unit in my drawing. Now the second line in the branch controllers, this is the hot gas line. This is going to come out of the compressor. It's also going to connect to the outdoor unit. And then these last three lines are the liquid line, and it's going to connect over here to the expansion device. So since that took some time to draw, let me make two copies of it to talk about later. So let's go back to the first one and let's talk about what happens during cooling mode. Okay, so starting at the compressor, hot gas comes out the hot gas line and travels in this direction. Because we're in cooling mode, we're going to send that to the outdoor unit to reject heat. From there, it'll come out the outdoor unit, go into the expansion device, which will cool it down, and now it'll flow through the liquid line to each of the units. It doesn't need to go through the expansion device here because it is already cool, and it's sent into the indoor units, which sends cold air into the space and cools the space. From there, the refrigerant flows out into the suction line and back into the compressor. 
and then it starts that process again. So any valve in our drawing that doesn't show flow going through it is closed. Now let's look at what happens during heating mode. Starting again at the compressor, the hot gas comes out of the compressor and through the hot gas line. Now, because we're in heating mode, we want to send this to the indoor units. So it'll come in and go into each of the indoor units. Airflow will pass through it and send heat into the spaces. Now the refrigerant comes out and goes through the expansion device in each of the branch controllers, which will cool it down and connects it back to the liquid line. From here, it bypasses this expansion device because it's already cool and goes into the outdoor unit. Then when the refrigerant comes out of the outdoor unit, it'll flow through and connect to the suction line and go back to the compressor and then start the whole process again. But you can also heat some units and cool other units with a VRF system. So let's look at that. Let's say these top two units want cooling and the bottom one wants heating. Starting at the compressor, out the hot gas line. Let's look at the cooling units first. So it's going to come in to the outdoor unit. Heat will be rejected. It'll go through the expansion device, be cooled down and flow into the two units that want cooling through the liquid line. And these spaces are cooled. It comes out of these two units, goes back to the suction line, and flows back into the compressor. But at the same time, because you have a unit that needs heat, the hot gas line will also be sending heat to that unit. And that'll heat the space. And the refrigerant will come out of it, go through the expansion device here into the liquid line. And now you can see it's flowing back into the same liquid line that is flowing into this middle unit. It's actually helping cool this center unit as well. And so that's what the flow looks like during heating and cooling. Let's put everything back on screen so you can look at them all at the same time. So that's a VRF system and how it works. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and thanks for watching.